Well, how'd you get that evidence? Did you have to count each and every one of them? Ooh, that would take a very long time. Mm. But since we do have that time, let me show you something right here in my backpack. Let's see, pots and pans. No, ah, everybody, take a look at this. This here is a trail camera and it helps me count. See, normally, like I said, those singing dogs are shy and elusive, so it is hard to spot them out in the wild. But with this motion activated camera, it takes a picture of an animal every single time one crosses its path. Oh, so you're telling me that these photos allow for us to learn where the singing dogs live and how they might behave in the wild. Exactly. And we can use that information to preserve crucial habitats and who knows, find other habitats that would be perfectly suited for them. Nice. And if you all want to identify animals in real life to help those researchers out, all you have to do is visit a website called Snapshot Serengeti. Now, just by using your computer or smartphone, you can help scientists and save those animals, as well as become a citizen scientist. And who knows, maybe the animals that you help count will one day also be able to be added to that safe program list. And I think, at least for today, that singing dog is going to stay elusive. shy and very elusive. Definitely. <laughs> Did you hear that, Daniela? You know what, Claudia? I did. Mm. And it reminds me of one of the many bird calls I heard on the next leg of my expedition. Mm. The savannas of Africa. See, the savannas are home to a wide variety of birds. And one of the coolest ones flew right over my head. It was a lantern falcon, just like Millennium here. Now, she cannot travel at the speed of light, but these birds are still faster than a car on a highway. As I watched that bird, I realized it was flying directly at me. But it really wasn't coming after me. It was chasing after a smaller sized bird the size of a pigeon. Well, that chase went into loop until finally a dive bomb right to the ground. And as she demonstrated, these birds are so agile that they can quickly turn on a dime. And when they're hunting the sky, they use a sucker punch method to take down their prey. Talk about intense. Now these ladder falcons might not be endangered, but their close cousin, you gotta go home now. Their close cousin, the peregrines, nearly went extinct after a dangerous pesticide. You gotta go that way. That people were using. And thanks to caring conservation to put a ban on those pesticides, peregrines worldwide made a remarkable re recovery, and now they're a common sight to see all over the world include large cities like Paris and New York. Literally one of my favorite conservation messages ever. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what happened next, Daniela? Oh, okay. Well, as I was watching that beautiful falcon's flight, I just had this weird feeling that someone was staring at me. So of course I turned and I was correct. There was a pair of gigantic eyes staring at me from the underbrush. Oh. Well, after I calmed down, I did realize that those eyes weren't eyes. They were ears. Oh, it sounds like you noticed the eye spots on the ears of a gerbil. One, right, mm -hmm. right. One of your only few types of felines with both spots and stripes. A coat that is both beautiful and practical. But unfortunately, many people are jealous of the gerbil style and want to copy their look, leading to them being poached for their fur. It could take up to nine cats of Naya size to make one human-sized coat. So I'd like to say, if you want to be a cool cat, remember everybody, go foe, not fur. I love that, Claudia, because it makes sense that these cats need their coat right where it's at. It allows them to hide long enough to sneak up and ambush their prey from any direction. With those long legs that are proportionately the longest of any other cat species. As she already demanded, it doesn't matter if it's a mouse yeah. in its burrow yeah. or a yeah. bird flying high in the sky. They're going to use those claws to catch up that unsuspecting prey. And to be honest, with the circle's nine-foot vertical leap, it makes me glad that I do not have feathers. Now that's exactly true. If you'd like to see, Naya is incredibly agile. And, well, if she had a long tail, like often people will mistake them for cheetahs, mm -hmm. that would definitely not come in handy when she would land right back down to the ground. So, short tails are a necessity. I like it. Nice. 
Now then, I've been a little curious, uh -huh. uh, since we've just heard your serval story. Yeah. I do have to ask, if a serval didn't get to you, then how did you get all of these rips in your clothes? Rips in my clothes? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's kind of a funny story. Okay. You know how I get a little distracted by shiny things? <laughs> oh no, this could not be good. Well, as I was watching that serval disappear into the tall grasses, uh -huh. I noticed something kind of shiny on the ground, so of course I had to go over and investigate. You did it. I did. So, I got closer, and I realized there was some kind of wire looped on the ground. I bent over to pick it up and, <laughs> it got snagged on my vest. Daniela, are you okay? That was a snare. I'm okay, and don't worry, because just as I was picking up the tail end of it, the Black Mambas showed up. The Black Mambas? Yep. Daniela, isn't that a venomous snake? Yes, but more importantly, mm -hmm. it is a group of women that call themselves the Black Mambas. Here oh. we go, everybody. These are who I'm talking about. Oh, so they're an anti-poaching unit in South Africa. That's right. Wait a minute. And they're all unarmed? Uh-huh. And they are all female. Duh. <laughs> they sound like a bunch of real-life Wonder Women. They really are. Believe it or not, folks, the Black Mamas patrol over 200 square miles of wildlife preserves, scaring away poachers and taking down snares that would trap and injure animals. Now, the Living Desert provides these ladies with financial support for all of the work that they do. And we were able to send researchers to investigate just how much of an impact that they make. It's a good thing you're all sitting down because in the areas they patrol, hunting of rhinos has gone down by half. And the hunting and poaching due to snare has gone down 76% in just the past few years. That is fantastic. They deserve a round of applause. I wish I was as cool as they are. It sounds like they're making a really big impact out there. They That's are. Fascinating. But you know what, everybody? Poachers can be scary. Very scary. In fact, if I were to scare off some poachers, I couldn't do it by myself. I think I'd have to call in my good friend Pixie for some backup. Uh, Pixie? Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't really have the same ring to it as Black oh, Mamba. Just wait. But I guess, whoa, oh, Pixie's I'm doing sorry, it. I take it back. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Everybody, I'd like for you to meet Pixie, our female cake porcupine. Um, you know what, Claudia? Yes. I saw these animals on my expedition, one of which was spending off an entire pride of lions by itself. Oh, definitely. For a porcupine and those quills, they're pretty great when they have to be, especially around those predators, because those long quills are essential for their survival for that very reason. But just like many different types of items out there, we're talking ivory, horn, and even fur, well, there are thousands of products that are illegally poached and exported around the world. These porcupine quills are included. That is true, but believe it or not, there is a way to help out talented craft people all over the world. So you really don't have to put a ban on everything exotic, you know? It just takes a bit of research before you buy. See, if you know these items were obtained in a legal, sustainable way, I personally think that just makes your souvenir even more special. And, oh, everybody take a look at this bracelet. It was made by some of our very own zookeeper with dropped porcupine hair. Or, That's, of course, quills. That's beautiful. Hey, nice. Where do I get one? Uh, 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 I can make you one. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Wow, it sounds like you had a pretty wild time in Africa. Oh, I totally did. But after traveling so far and wide and getting more than a few blisters, I was ready to come back home to the living desert. Oh, what? Wait a minute. You don't actually live here on grounds, do you? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I have a beautiful house over by the giraffe habitat. Um, excuse me, everybody. Daniela? Yeah. Aren't you talking about our model Tanzanian schoolhouse? Uh, <laughs> no, that's not what I was talking about. <laughs> you know what, forget I said anything. Okay. You will not believe what happened to me when I touched down at LAX. Uh -huh. After being in that uh -huh. really airplane for hours, exactly I decided I needed huh? to stretch my leg out in nature. So, what I did is I grabbed my backpack and I started walking. As I was 
was walking, I ended up making my way through some beautiful cacti. And in that time, I heard a very interesting call. So I looked up in time to see a bird flying in the sky. So it was soon joined by four other raptors. I knew that this, of course, had to be a group of Harris's hawks, one of the few raptors that live in huts in a group. They use strategy to take down their prey, just like a pack of wolves do. Now, what happens is, when one spots that prey, they will take off, and the one that spotted it will send it into the awaiting clutches of its teammates. Now, it's a good thing that they do, because, well, everybody rodents have the superpower of multiplication. The beautiful hawks do their hunting routine and I started to follow because of course I got very excited okay and that's when I accidentally took a wrong step and fell all the way down into a landfill oh you know what yeah I was wondering where that smell was coming from no yeah oh since you got here <laughs> yeah I mean I haven't found a shower yet <laughs> but here's the thing Claudia yes that landfill wasn't a landfill anymore hmm. it was a beautiful reclaimed park a landfill transformed into a park mm -hmm. Daniela, are you sure you didn't hit your head when you I, fell uh, uh, no it is really a thing claudia you okay know, americans are recycling more and more every year mm -hmm. and uh, well speaking of recycling claudia look even your guest here at the show has been recycling oh, yeah. That's good good job, you guys. Yeah. what is happening oh no what Take a selfie with her if you like. And if you want to go one step further, you can come on down here. 